All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first uh, SEPSI webinar, which is Socially Connecting During COVID-19 in College. Today's presenters are Danielle Parks and Scott Mullins, um, both licensed social workers who work at the Institute for Disability Studies at the University of Southern Mississippi. Danielle currently serves as the transition specialist with the Institute for Disability Studies at the University of Southern Mississippi. Danielle received her bachelor's and master's degrees in social work from the University of Southern Mississippi. Scott currently serves as a transition specialist at the Institute as well. And he grew up in Wesson, Mississippi where he graduated from both Wesson High School and Papaya Lincoln Community College. Papaya. <laughs> Scott received his bachelor's and master's um, in social work from the University of Southern Mississippi and graduated as a Phi Alpha Honor Society member. So I'm going to turn it over to Danielle and Scott. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, good afternoon, everybody. First off, um, it's such an honor to and a huge thing to be the first one for this whole webinar series. So hopefully we set the bar a little high, but we thank each of you for coming. Uh, like Susanna said, um, my name is Danielle Parks and I'm the transition specialist and have my colleague member here, Scott Mullins, uh, who's also a transition specialist. And today we're talking about socially connecting during COVID-19 in college. And here on the title screen, y'all will see different pictures of many different individuals who have been part of our programs in some capacity. So on the top left, we have some high school members who are doing an employment program of ours. We have two post-pilot, post-secondary program students represented on the screen. We have some, a group of members in Special Olympics College and a self-advocate and also a Step Up to Leadership event, which we're gonna talk about Step Up to Leadership event later on in the presentation, but they're on the title slide because it's all about them. So that's a huge representation of us at IDS. Oops, sorry. Okay. So just a little bit about IDS. So we are Mississippi's USED, which is the University Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities which means that we are under the umbrella of the AUCD network, which is Association of University Centers on Disabilities. And so to wrap up of what you said is, so we um, facilitate the flow of dis disability related information between the community and the university through different things like research dissemination and service and also education. And again, there are some more pictures up top of some of our young people in our programs. So here is our mission statement at IDS. So we serve individuals with disabilities from birth on to uh, adulthood. So I think uh, the oldest one that are in our program is probably in her 30s. Uh, so we are about serving these individuals in Mississippi people who have disabilities as well as their families. And as y'all can see in our mission statement, the huge components of IDS is independence, productivity, and community incl inclusion, no matter what age range it is. So here on the screen as well, we have two pictures of, we have an individual in our Transition to Adulthood programs that served uh, in one of our employment programs doing an internship. And then on the bottom here, we have uh, our AmeriCorps group, which Scott is going to talk about just a briefly uh, serving community. So at IDS, we have four different priority areas. Uh, so briefly, um, just want to hint on those. So we have early childhood inclusion and education. So within that area, we promote quality educational experiences for young children with disabilities. And this is done through our Mississippi Early Childhood Inclusion Center. And within that uh, program, they provide different screenings to families statewide. Um, so that's what they do in that. 
We have our housing area. Uh, to the left here, we have a staff member in our housing program giving our mayor, Toby Barker, an award during Homelessness Awareness Week. And in the housing program, uh, they assist families who are experiencing homelessness or living in shelters and that they that need to be quickly rehoused and uh, stabilize permanent housing. And also the last two areas, uh, the transition to adulthood, um, and it's in bold and red because that's the area that we represent. So in transition to adulthood, we promote the development and overall achievement for youth and young adults with disabilities. We're huge on promoting independence and commu community living in different areas such as like self-advocacy, employment, uh, and so we provide different transition services and programs within those areas. And to the left uh, is a group picture of some of our young people with disabilities as well, some of our staff members. Our transition to adulthood area has a huge honor of receiving the Mississippi Torch Bearer Award uh, for carrying the torch for people so here are just some of our learning objectives that we're gonna uh, talk about today. So we're gonna talk about the importance and benefits of inclusive social engagement and recreational activities in general, as well as more importantly, after COVID. And then also uh, we're gonna actually do a live demonstration. Uh, hopefully we'll get to two of them, but definitely one of them of an actual demonstration of a virtual platform that we use and we're gonna get y'all involved in that today. And then on the bottom is actually one of our pilot post-secondary program students on her first day back to class uh, after COVID hit. So a little bit about our pilot program and I say pilot guys, because we are not an official program yet. Obviously we want to be, but um, we are the Higher Education for All pilot program at the University of Southern Mississippi, and we were funded by the Mississippi Council on Developmental Disabilities. We are actually in our second year of being funded as a pilot program. So a huge thanks to the council for funding us through that. We have had seven students uh, total the past uh, two years throughout the pilot program. Five of them have been community adult learner students, which just means that they have taken one class a semester instead of enrolling as a full-time student. And then we have two full-time students as well that we have served in our pilot program because we have provided them extra services, extra support that our community adult learners also receive. And those two full-time students have lived on campus as well. So we are here as a resource for them and provide those extra supports that they may need to succeed as a full-time student. And there on the bottom is our Higher Education for All logo. So uh, our pilot post-secondary students take inclusive classes, whether it's for an audit or a grade, uh, probably like most of, uh, or not all of y'all's programs, but that is up to the individual uh, to decide on if they want to take it for an audit or a grade. We do provide recommendations. So like for like right now, actually, we are in the middle of advisement for our uh, young people with disabilities who are in the pilot program. And the academic advisor and also ourselves will provide recommendations to them based off of how they're doing in the class this semester. If we think um, if they're capable of taking in it for an audit or a grade, but solely it is up to the individual and the family to make that decision. Also, we have a huge component of campus and community involvement. So we encourage them to get involved in at least one campus organization. And then we also ask them to do community service because it's about giving back and volunteering. So uh, we require them to do community service. We use person-centered planning. So a lot of y'all may have heard of it before, but it's about putting them in the center of their plan um, in college. And also we do this in all of our other programs. So we ask them and help them develop like this profile and they share about what's important to them, what's important for them, what are their goals, what kind of support do they need, what are characteristics of themselves that they admire and see in themselves. So those person-centered plans 
assist us with creating those individualized schedules and helping them choose a class that might interest them because they share their interests through that person-centered planning step. Uh, so we develop those individualized schedules based off of that. And then this semester is actually, uh, before COVID, we were gonna do uh, internship experiences, but uh, when COVID hit, obviously, um, and they started coming back to school, we were like, we still wanna incorporate the internship experiences. So this past summer, we did remote internship experiences for some high school students. So we took that experience and made it into an experience for our pilot post-secondary students. So they are currently participating in remote internship experiences based off of a career interest that they chose. And we give them different individualized activities to complete those internships. And then finally, we have a weekly socialization group that is actually led by an ABA or Applied Behavior Analyst. And so she leads that group and they just are learning different social skills from her. Uh, we use a training and reward method. Before COVID, we were actually using gaming as a reward because we have a gaming room. Uh, so uh, with a socialization group in, uh, on Zoom, they do training and then they do some type of activity on Zoom, like a, a fun little game and things like that. So here below on the bottom, we have a virtual Zoom meeting between a, one of our pilot post-secondary students and her incredible professor. And that was done uh, before co uh, when COVID hit and transitioning to the new school year. And then on the right, we have two of our pilot post-secondary students on their first day of class. So in general, we need to talk about in this presentation, what is the benefit of social engagement and recreation for post-secondary students with disabilities? So exposure in, to interaction with peers. So it's about developing those social skills that will help them succeed uh, beyond college and to employment and things like that is it making them interact and push themselves socially to form those connections with individuals that maybe they've met never met before. Um, so it's about developing those social skills and using those interactions to develop those relationships. So research has said there is a link between the quality of college life and growth and development with, for social engagement and recreation. So it's about that personal growth. It's about helping them succeed in college. So there has been, and researchers said there's a link between those two. We want them to grow personally. We want them to develop pers in a, on a personal level. So that social engagement recreational opportunities can help them with that. Also research has said there's success, uh, more success in college academically and socially. So there is a correlation, not just on a social level, but on an academic level as well. So the more that they're exposed to these social type interactions and these recreational opportunities, they're going to succeed academically uh, more than they would without those opportunities. Also the development of self-advocacy skills. This is huge for us at IDS because we are, we're just, we love the self-advocacy component because we want these individuals to learn that they have a voice. They have a story to share just like anybody else, whether they have a disability or not. So the social engagement and recreation helps them develop those self-advocacy skills and just to gain the confidence to recognize that they are an individual just like anybody else and they have a story to share just like anybody else. And also a huge part of it is inclusion. So with the social engagement and recreation, they have opportunities to engage with those that may not have a disability. And that's what we're huge about at IDS as well. And I'll turn it over to Scott. Thank you, Danielle. So I want to talk to you a little bit about Step Up to Leadership Advisory Council. This is a USM student organization that we established here at the Institute for Disability Studies. And we are made up of individuals with and without disabilities. And our post-secondary students as well are a part of Step Up and are involved in uh, various opportunities. 
So step up, recognize this, you know, young leaders tomorrow with and without disabilities are like three core units that we do a lot of focus on as one of them, Danielle mentioned, is self-advocacy because we do want to work with these individuals. We want to help them be able to give them a voice. And we have a self-advocacy coordinator that's really able to encourage them to be able to reach their voice as well with his story of autism and how he was able to overgo his trials. We also do a lot of focus of inclusion. A lot of our transition to adulthood programs are inclusive. So we want to involve as many people as we can. So we, as I mentioned, we have members that are post-secondary students. We have members that are community members. And we also have some that are also high school students as well, coming into getting ready for their transition into college. And then our other big part is Step Up wants to be involved on the campus here at USM. But not only the campus here at USM in Hattiesburg, we also have Step Up members that work and um, take part on the coast side of campus in Lone Beach. And we also have another Step Up charter that's located in Mobasa, Kenya. And uh, we actually have a meeting with them and our officers coming up uh, next week to discuss some future activities and collaborations. What we do is we provide various different opportunities and activities for our Step Up members by submitting it into a calendar that we send out that will go over our weekly activities and our monthly activities. That can sometimes range from anywhere from five to 10, depending on what all is going on that month. And as Danielle says, a lot of individuals like doing a lot of connection-based activities, working alongside each other. So we would do a lot of fun things like going out to the movies, going bowling, but we would also do service at our nonprofits in our community garden. We would just find those opportunities to be able to bring these individuals together. And one of the benefits that this program has been is that it's allowed our individuals to come together through shared interests and they've made lifelong friends in the process. So as I kind of mentioned, we do provide the inclusive recreation. Step Up will join in partnership with both Triad AmeriCorps, which is our national service organization. And we have another group, our Special Olympics College. So we have um, a variety of these in adulthood programs that are coming together. And a lot of them are involved within Step Up as far as our efforts, because you know we are trying to get the word out, you know, uh, the things that we're doing, to get people involved. And for our individuals, that's important to be able to have a routine of being involved and engaging. And as I mentioned with uh, Triad AmeriCorps, one of the things about Triad AmeriCorps is that we offer a scholarship for that program for members if they come in, whether it's uh, like halftime or a minimum time. And we currently have post-secondary students, some that are in the pilot program that are also doing AmeriCorps-based volunteer work and helping. And, you know, it's all about, like we talked about, spreading that self-advocacy, using our voice, spreading the word about disability awareness and all the things that are involved with it that some people are not sure about or that don't know. And then we have a campus that we're able to utilize that to be able to showcase ourselves. And then, of course, we do a lot of focus on leadership. These are young leaders with and without disabilities, and we try to work with them on a lot of those leadership-based skills. So we were pretty involved, as I talked about, five to 10 events, being in person, things were going great, and then boom, COVID happens. And of course, as all y'all know, everything's been affected by COVID. Shut down, our state had a um, shutdown, other states had shut down, in-person events stopped, everybody has to wear a mask, social distance, staying at home, and for our individuals, that's a little bit difficult because a lot of some, like I talked about, we have individuals with without disabilities and some of those with disabilities don't have um, their driver's license and such. They rely on their families or other supports to be able to get them to the events. So we're not having any events anymore. So we're like, oh no, our individuals, they're at home. They're stuck with nothing to do. We came together, worked together as a team to collaborate, to come up with some alternatives which um, we were able to uh, break through uh, virtually in order to re-engage our members. So uh, 
This is just a slide where I wanted to show y'all different other different components that of our pilot program that did continue virtually. So uh, we use peer mentoring. So here to the left, we actually have a peer mentoring session that occurred virtually when COVID first hit. So that continued. And then here in the middle, we have uh, we participated in the inaugural inclusive post-secondary education day. So our students develop some Facebook posts and shared about the impact of the pilot program and what their favorite thing about USM is. So we participated in that. And then to the right, we have one of our pilot program students uh, participating in our socialization group. So socialization groups did continue virtually and uh, it's been a huge part of the pilot program. I believe the, the students really look forward to it each week. So we're very appreciative of Melanie Dale, who's the ABA analyst, uh, continuing that virtually. So one of the things that we decided to uh, utilize during this time of being shut down to re-engage our members is a um, social engagement platform called Discord. Now Discord was created in 2019 and it was a a location for gamers to be able to come together and talk about gameplay, share their gameplay, tips, secrets, and all of that. But due to COVID, Discord changed and it adapted and saw the need that they needed to become a little bit more accessible. So they started opening up and allowing more opportunities to do be more creative within Discord that can be even outside of just gaming. And we were one of the organizations that were able to utilize this. So we utilize this by, it's a basically toss and text channel. And we, you know, we use audio chat channels, we do texts, GIFs, photos, and we do video messaging as well. So for a lot of our socialization based opportunities, um, well, you can see here, there's a picture down below. So this is what our Discord server looks like. We have it set up on the side on the left where we have a list of different opportunities where we're presenting different events. Some of those are socialization interest channels. Basically, our individuals can get on here and talk about the things that they like, whether it's anime, movies, fashion, cooking, um, talking about areas to be able to volunteer or if they're into you know specific type of hobbies. So they're able to get on and share and discuss and our members stayed on this for a, a good while. They would talk throughout the day. We had notifications going on and off. We had to silence some of our notifications because we were still trying to get some work done, but they really took to this and they were really engaging and they were so happy to be able to come together virtually, even though they weren't able to be there physically. And then we even took it one step further and started providing space opportunities. We did Dungeons and Dragons role-playing opportunity through Discord. We did um, localizing tabletop-based games, utilizing uh, video feed and um, some of the uh, platforms to be able to play some games, like some, like card games, Family Feud and such. And then we've done some, we have our Spotlight Trivia, and that's actually what this picture is down here that's showing, where we have our members that get on uh, weekly and do trivia. That trivia can be, you know, from general topics to pop culture to educational based topics. We have scavenger hunts and we've just been able to really expand upon what we've been able to do with Discord and our members reacted really well. They found the place that they could be able to use their voice where they could be able to talk and continue to be able to socialize because they were stuck at home. They didn't have anything and individuals with disabilities, especially, you know, when they're stuck at home and they're not being engaging, you know, they might lose some of that structure and routine that they originally built up and individuals that are about having their structure and routine, you know, they don't really want that to get messed up because it really throws them out of whack. And so COVID has done that for our individuals, but within a month of shutting down, we were able to re-engage them with these opportunities such as Discord and by utilizing Zoom, which is what we're all on here now. So of course, you can use Zoom to do uh, various different uh, calls for businesses, for meetings and so forth. And we did use some of those. 
we have had uh, meetings with our um, individuals, with our post-secondary students, like Danielle was sharing with the socialization, peer mentoring. And then we've also utilized our AmeriCorps program with Zoom to be able so they can still have their member meetings no matter where they're at so they can continue doing service for the communities. But we decided, you know, to take it one step further. So we started utilizing Zoom to actually host events, whether we did music-based events. We used the whiteboard function on Zoom to be able to do uh, some Pictionary opportunities. We have hosted various different virtual parties and the picture down below shows a variety of our different members. And this was one of our first big virtual events that we were able to host back in August, starting the new year of Step Up and everyone was excited. We had a lot of people on. There's people that you can't see, but there was a lot of people on and they were really glad to see each other and they were having fun and laughing and engaging. And we got to do like fun stuff like karaoke, sharing what is going on with us. We did some lip syncing. We had fun. We had a dance contest. The staff, we all got to dance and then the members got to dance and we were just having just a good old time. And it just felt like things were a little bit normal, even though we were still doing it virtually, but it, you could really see the positivity, the happiness from our members being able to engage in that way. And we wanted to continue that by furthering other opportunities and activities to continue that engagement by utilizing Discord like we talked about and utilizing Zoom. And I know a lot of y'all know the lovely and amazing Dr. Jerry Alliston. So shout out to Dr. Jerry here for his amazing dance moves during that event. <laughs> So like we talked about for socialization opportunities, we did socialization groups. We have a news series where when we have an intern that goes over, you know, information going on in the news and the world, IDS information, what is our community doing? And she takes it one step further in order to be educational. And she talks about events that's happened in the history, but that's happened in the same date or in the same week. We've uh, utilized it for like we talked about with our meetings with our step up officers, our triad officers, and we've utilized it for various other different training opportunities, uh, both within AmeriCorps, within Step Up, and even our employment programs as well. And like we're talking about, for recreation, we created a series, a crafting series, Crafting with Dawn. There's a picture below here that shows us at our Halloween Boo Bash event, and Miss Dawn happens to be the last picture that's on the right in the witch's hat. So she created a series where we were able to do different crafts and projects. And a lot of our members enjoy being able to do that and be hands-on. And we've created of so many different things at home. The members have been able to bring them up since being able to come back to the office here and there. And we can be able to use those in our own uh, future fundraisers that we got going on. Like I talked about, we did various different games. We utilized Zoom to host an exercise fitness program called Fit5 where we had our AmeriCorps young leaders with and without disabilities. And one of our, um, another one of our post-secondary students was able to lead that event with our members. We've done a cooking series. And like I talked about, we utilize different type of virtual come togethers, our school celebration, our Halloween boo bash. And, you know, we have different ideas for more stuff in the future, but it's really shown that it's working and really engaging with our members that cannot be here in person with us as much as we would like them to be. And then also in this picture, this was from our Halloween boo bash. So we got people dressed up in costumes. So we had our showcase, we did some more karaoke, we played some Pictionary and we just had a good old time just being able to come together during such a time of uh, dealing with all this pandemic and shutdown and the effects that everybody has been experiencing. And we actually just had an event last night. Um, so we had a ladies night virtual sleepover. And I will say it turned out honestly better than I ever expected. Uh, so we had different games that we did. Uh, Miss Dawn did a uh, cooking uh, where she showed us how to make a sleepover snack. Uh, they And then we just had time just to socialize and you know, talk about boys and things like that. So it, it was an incredible event. It honestly ex exceeded my expectations. So. 
So being able to utilize these opportunities through Discord and Zoom, um, you know, we're able to bring about these different firsthand experiences for our individuals. And a lot of them, a lot of it comes down to is a big sense of, you know, of a connection coming to be able to gather um, virtually since we weren't able to physically. This is how we were able to continue to engage our individuals to find out what was going on with them. This is how our programs were able to continue even with people not being able to allow to come back in person. Um, we have one of our individuals here, a picture off to the right here. So she is a post-secondary student in our pilot program, and she is a Step Up member and a Triad AmeriCorps member. This is her participating in our virtual fitness group that we were talking about, Fit5. So when one of our individuals would be leading the program, our members would be outside or inside, wherever they wanted to, and then do the exercise along with everybody. So we were able to get some pretty good pictures of them being able to do that. Another good positive benefit of being able to utilize these different virtual opportunities is we were able to be adaptive with it. And then not only that, but due to COVID, both Discord and Zoom, you know, they changed along the way as well because they see that people needed their programs and such during this time of the pandemic. So they were able to create more options to make it more accessible to make people be able to have the opportunity of coming together to engage, whether for fun or whether for business. And then just in general, like I talked about, there was just such an excitement of our members being able to come together and see each other and talk to each other and find out how they're doing and such. And it just increased the main mood of everybody that was being affected by COVID-19. Um, and not only this, so I mentioned that Triad AmeriCorps, it's a national service program that gets a scholarship. Well, in order for our members to get a scholarship, they have to complete a set amount of hours. Due to COVID, our members were not allowed to go into nonprofit organizations. They weren't able to really um, go into the schools to teach health education. So it's like, what do we do? We need our members to get hours so they can still continue getting their scholarships. So using Zoom and Discord really helped us be able to engage those members as well so they could continue getting hours. They were able to utilize um, Zoom and Discord to be able to create different videos on how to, to do this, um, dealing with uh, safety, or even just doing just independent living skills and such. But we were able to continue engage people and they were able to continue collecting their hours so they could get their scholarships, so they could continue going to college and use that stipend whether it was for paying for that year or even paying off on future loans or uh, payments that needed to be done. And so this next slide, this is Jason Citron. He is the Discord CEO. There's a picture of him at the bottom where he's sitting at a conference that he's talking to wearing his Discord um, logo shirt. But this is one of the quotes that he said. He said, it is a new way to talk and spend time. What makes Discord magical is that it's a way to be together, where you can play a video game, work on homework, do side projects, or just be able to text and chat with your friends, family, and your fellow classmates. So what better source is there than the actual young people who have participated in these virtual events? So. When we were asked to do this presentation, we decided there's no better source. So we're just gonna to go to them and ask them, what has it been about these virtual opportunities that has stood out to you? How has it helped you through this trying and difficult time of COVID-19? So here are a few quotes from our actual young people. I believe my favorite one is the, the first one that is listed, and I'll just read it out loud to everybody, but it says, if it wasn't for COVID-19, then we never would have found or used these virtual options, which was like a light in the darkness. So COVID-19 has, for all of us, uh, felt like a dark moment in our lives. So this young person recognized that just these virtual options, even though it seems so small, but to her, it was like a light in that dark moment. 
And then we have a quote about crafting with Dawn, uh, which Scott mentioned earlier. So below is a picture of an actual crafting with Dawn session where they made some uh, paper flowers. And so that's a very popular thing because they can do things hands-on. So it's such a great event. And then here are just a few more quotes from our young people. So here to the right, we have uh, one of our young people who was at home and participating and interacting on a virtual uh, event or a virtual meeting. So as y'all can just see from these quotes, the main theme that you see is the sense of connection that it brought back to everybody, even whenever we were not together or not able to be in person, it still brought that sense of connection back to everybody, so. So now we actually wanna do a live demonstration with you, utilizing both Discord and Zoom, um, provided we have time. So first we're gonna do our live demonstration through Discord. And we have one of our interns currently, she's gonna be leading one of our Spotlight Trivia sessions. Now we're not gonna do a full um, Spotlight session where we would do normally with um, 12 questions and a special Spotlight question at the end due to time constraints. So we're gonna do three questions and then an extra spotlight question. So our members are gonna be on here and we have some of them that's that's gonna be participating. And so we're gonna be able to start doing the session. But we don't want you to watch, we want you to participate as well. So like in the chat box. So when you see a question pop up, why don't you answer it in the chat box? Let's see what y'all think about some of this. And a huge shout out to Susanna for being uh, willing to join our Discord channel so that y'all can get a visual. And so somebody in the audience can also see what we do on Discord. So thank you, Susanna, for being willing to do this. So as you see here, Megan is on, and so she's about to start. We like to let our members know right before it starts a few moments, and then you know we let them know, okay, here we are, we're starting. We lay out what are the rules, um, how long is going to be, what the quiz is going to be on, which topics, and then we get, you know, like members are like, okay, we're ready to go. Let's do this. And like, okay. So then we start with our first question. And so the first question of today is, what year did Disneyland open? Was it A, 1987, B, 1955, C, 1990, or D, 1945? So y'all can use the chat to be able to um, provide an answer. Let's see what y'all think. Okay, we got a lot of A's and B's. Got a few D's here. Okay, so now what Megan is allowing to do is we allow our members to answer within about 10, 12 seconds, and then she will post the answer. At that point, nobody else can submit answers. And once you put an answer, you can't change it. And the answer is b 1955 a lot of you said that but a lot of you said c some c some d's and everything but the answer is 1955 and sorry miss susanna you didn't get that one but maybe the next one <laughs> and it's okay it's okay to um guess it's okay to have fun like I said, we have members that utilize um, this for various different um, opportunities and having fun. Okay, so question two, which Full House character voices Aladdin? Is it A, Steve, B, Danny, C, Joey, or D, Jesse? So go ahead and make your choice. Okay. 
All right. I have a lot of A's and some B's. Miss Danielle's playing. So she's utilizing a gift from the show with Michelle saying, you got it, dude. Yep, everybody is getting final answers in. And Miss Megan's about to provide us the answer. So the correct answer is A, Steve, which a lot of you actually listed. So way to go. Sometimes when we do these, um, especially if it's more the educational based trivia, we'll provide the answer, but we also provide like, here's a little educational tidbit. And now we're on our last question. What is the name of Ariel and Prince Eric's daughter? Is it A, Aurora, B, Megara, C, Melody, or D, Harmony? As this character was featured in Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Okay, looks like we have a lot of C's. All right, another person signing in. Oh yeah, we got a lot of C's across the board. A couple of A's, a B, but a lot of C's. So let's see if you're right. And of course, y'all got it. The correct answer is C, Melanie. And there's Miss Susanna utilizing the gift. She got the right answer, so time to celebrate. So what would happen at this point? We'd be at the end of the quiz, and most of the time we have um, members that are tied. So, you know, we want to try to find a way to break that tie. So we provide a special spotlight question. Now, the spotlight question doesn't have any multiple choice. You have a question, you answer it, and then you get awarded points based off of how you answered. And then the person who's actually leading the quiz, because we have different people that lead the quiz, including some of our post-secondary leaders. So... In this particular instance, the choices are going to be where if the individual answers first and correctly, they get three points. If they answer correctly, but they're not first, they'll get two points. And if they get the answer wrong, they receive zero points. However, we've had opportunities where we've done this where it's been, if you get it incorrectly, you lose five points. So anybody can um, be able to participate in this and you don't have to take the spotlight challenge. It's their choice. It's just like kind of a risk or lose situation. Some people like going for it. Some people like playing it safe. So for the sake of it, how about you all try to go for it? And the question is, what was the first Pixar movie? Okay, we got a lot of Toy Stories listed. We got one vote for Nemo, uh, Finding Nemo, okay. A Bug's Life, Wally. And then here we'll also provide, um, you know, like 10, 10 to 12 seconds for them to answer. No change in answers. And then we'll provide the answer. And majority of you got it. The answer is indeed Toy Story. And as Susanna used, to infinity and beyond.
And this is how we would be able to run this event to be able to utilize and, you know, do some education and have fun with our members. And then at the end of it, everybody gets points. So we do a third place, a second place, and a first place. And we award them uh, various points that they will get to utilize and uh, for different prizes in the future. She's tallying up our points right now. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, Miss Susanna is in third place with 20 points. Ooh, for Susanna. <laughs> Showcasing her third place ribbon. Way to go, Susanna. Okay, getting ready for second place. And then we have Dragger, one of our members, at 35 points. And then we get along to our first place. And then Miss Danielle has taken first place with 50 points. Yeah. And I promise, guys, I did not even know the questions beforehand. So I promise I didn't cheat. <laughs> 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 so this is pretty pretty much how we do our trivia event with awarding um the points first second and third and oops looks like we have an angry member they demand a recap <laughs> <laughs> while others are recommending and saying good job way to go everyone so this is how we would do our event here and we thank you for being able to, you know, play along and everything. Good job for a lot of you people. It's like y'all got a lot of good answers there. And this is just a fun way, like I said, that we can play use to utilize our members. These are ways that y'all could use in the future to be able, if you wanted to use Discord for your own programs and such. So this is just one of the ideas that we have been able to formulate and use together to continue to engage our individuals. Yeah, and to show y'all as well, a, kind of a full visual, so here are like our different channels that Scott was referring to earlier, as I'll see to the left. So we had different social channels. They can, you can actually set up a voice chat thing. So if you see a speaker mm -hmm. beside it, it's an actual voice chat event. Uh, the hashtag ones, as you see, is, it might be like through text, just like we did with the spotlight. And so, yeah, you can get very creative with it, whether it's through voice or through chatting and sending up different channels and things like that. Yeah, and you just simply go to the pluses on the side there to be able to create the channels that you want people to join. And it's a good way to get announcements out too, because if you just do the at sign and everybody and everyone that's on that server, everybody will receive a message of any type of announcements or things that are coming up that you want to post about. So it's one of the ways that we get out a lot of our events other than using email and Facebook as well. So uh, unfortunately, I know we want, we, it looks like we're not going to have time to get to the second demonstration I wanted to show y'all, but I will talk about one of the, uh, one of the Zoom uh, activities that we use. And we actually used this last night during our sleepover. So um, as mentioned before, some of y'all may have never used it or seen it, but there is a whiteboard function on Zoom. So here uh, y'all will see during our Halloween event, we actually used the Pictionary event uh, using, the Zoom, uh, using the Zoom whiteboard function. So the way that we have done that is we will share the whiteboard and we have the individuals message us privately because in the chat, 
there are options to send a message to everybody or to somebody individually. So if I was hosting the Zoom, like right now, I would have Scott or Susanna or any of y'all to message me privately, something you want me to draw or to attempt to draw, because God, let me tell you, I'm not an artist, trust me. You should have seen my drawings last night. Um, but we take those of what they want us to draw and the rest of the group has to guess what I'm drawing, no matter how bad it is. You know, that, that it, it's funny because you can tell like myself or Scott or whoever's leading the Zoom, like you're gonna be drawing, even though you're not the most artistic person, but it's funny because the, the members laugh at it. They take great joy out of it. So it's one of our popular uh, go-to uh, interactive activities for anything, whether it's a party or a meeting or anything like that. And these are some of our Discord uh, resources. So I mentioned earlier that we have a self-advocacy coordinator named Taylor Carley. And one of the things that he does with us is he has his own video series and he does a lot of ed other editing for a lot of videos that we use with our program. Chit Chat Thursdays with Taylor, baby. And there he is right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, so, uh, the, there, there are several different videos that y'all can utilize right there as a, as a post-secondary program if you ever want to get it. So just to even look at Discord. So we have a video for you on how to create a group server, like our step up one. That would be one of the very first steps if you want to incorporate Discord into your program. And then there are several videos that Taylor created for you on how to set up an account, whether it's on your desktop or on your mobile application, as you can do it on your phone as well. So. And here are Someone our in the chat said that they wanted to get those links. So I'll get those links out. So we thought we'd just use this time to see if anybody had any questions or anything. Um, so we're open to any type of questions. And we're an open book, guys. <laughs> um, it wasn't, I didn't have a question, but it was yes. more just, again, this I love, 10 out of 10. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for this. Um, but same as um, what they were saying before, is just like getting those links to those videos on how to use Discord, how to set it up. Um, because we know a lot of our students are right now, we just did a fundraising campaign for some technology. So what um, technology they would need um, to access this. And I see you just dropped it. So thank you. Yes. And again, I know um, like some of y'all's post-secondary programs may incorporate, like I said earlier, we try, we get our pilot post-secondary students to do community service hours. So one of our channels is community service. So if we come across uh, community service opportunities, whether it's virtual or in person, we use that as a announcement of here's some opportunities. And that's huge for our AmeriCorps members as well because uh, they have to do service hours so and it allows our post-secondary students to stay involved as much as they can other than because a lot of them are doing classes some of those are virtual some of those are hybrid but we want to be able to give them plenty of other opportunities to do stuff um, with us as well to continue staying involved as a student and as a member of our organization And we have an, a question here. How can I reach your organization? So um, you can contact us. Uh, I'll go That's ahead. That's actually the next my email in there. And then there we go. Miss Danielle's email. It's right here on the slide. I have for y'all too. So oh, right at that. <laughs> and then if anybody is interested in having a copy of this PowerPoint, just talk to Susanna and she'll get it sent to you. 
Um, I plan on sending out a copy of the PowerPoint and the recording tomorrow or Monday. But um, thank you everyone for, you know, having us here to be able to share kind of some of the innovative ways that we've been able to utilize some of these uh, technologies to continue to engage our students, our members, and we just appreciate the opportunity being able to speak. Thank you, Susanna, for having us. Hey, Scott, real quick, there are two really good questions in the chat, and I feel like this is one that you can answer. So Susan Skipper asks, are there any safety concerns with students using Discord? So with students using um, Discord, there are some servers, you know, that are not necessarily the safest to be on. However, what you're able to do is you're able to create your own server that you can be able to monitor and you can make it safe. So we have our members that's on our Discord server. The only people allowed there is the ones that we give permission to and that we send a link out to inviting them. And like if we have special guests that want, hey, we just want to check it out, then we would literally give them only temporary access where after like a day, they're... Um, account that they created would then be rejected from it. They still have a, an account, but they then would be able to utilize and create their own server. Or if we have somebody that's just testing it out, that's from here and they're like, oh, I really want to join. Let me do the application. Okay, now we can make you an official member and then we'll be able to stay on to the server. But yeah, there's different uh, features in there to be able to keep uh, individuals uh, safe mm -hmm. being on here. It's can I say something? To exploring some of the other servers out there is where things can get a little bit tricky. Can I um, say something? Go ahead, Taylor. Um, basically, if you think about making your own Discord, basically you can make your own guidelines. That's however you want to do it. There are so many things you can do with Discord that I don't even know, basically. I had to learn on the fly because I've been using it before it even came out in 2015 that you can make it how you want it to be and also make your own rules and make sure to educate people that even though you're online, you need to protect yourself and be smart with it. Don't give your personal information or, you know, if that makes sense, just be smart, have fun and just play on the score. And as I'll probably saw another safety thing that we do uh, Y'all probably saw a lot of the young people did not use, they use like nicknames or not their official name or anything like that. So that's another safety component that we do. Um, so we ask them to create like a nickname and not use their full name or anything like that. So. And we provide training opportunities for our individuals when getting on to different chat sites and stuff like this. Like Taylor was discussing, you know, going over, you know, what information you share, what information you don't share, because we do want our members uh, to be safe. We have our own safe and secure site and everything, but still some information is better, you know, to be kept in uh, private. And then like I said, some people are just rather use just their nicknames and such. But that wraps up our presentation, guys. Thank you again, Susanna and all of SEPC for allowing us to present. It's such a huge honor. Um, so, yeah, we greatly appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you, Danielle and Scott. And we will get this information out um, for people who are interested. And this is a great presentation. I hope everyone has a great afternoon. And we will be in touch about our next webinar opportunity. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye, y'all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.